Hi, I'm Johnny from ultimatepapermache.com and today I want to tell you about some free courses online and some really nice uh, video series that I found for for people who are really needing some creative projects to keep themselves from going nuts <laughs> while you're kind of stuck at home. I know a whole lot about uh, cabin fever because I live in Minnesota. I'm not from around here so I don't drive on snow and I'm a little too old to learn how to do it. So I spent three or four months every year stuck in the house and I spend all of that time making stuff you get to watch me do it <laughs> and I think I would go absolutely crazy if I wasn't making things so I wanted to let you know about a few things that I found online that you can do for free now obviously the first things that come to my mind are out on my website at ultimatepapermache.com because that's where I spend most of my time and I've been doing that since 2008 so there are over 600 posts out there right now. The very first thing that I made was this dragon. He's really cute. <laughs> I wouldn't make him the same way now. I, I hadn't thought up the, the idea of putting a, a cardboard pattern on the inside but he's still really cute so go ahead and check him out and all the other projects that are out on ultimatepapermache.com. Now most of the projects are free. The ones that aren't are, are these patterns like these and the Lion King patterns and you know the things that take me a whole month to design. I do charge a small amount for those. Um, I got bills too so <laughs> you know I got to. But I think I'm only charging for like 20 things and like I said there's over 600 posts. You'll also find guest posts on the website that you will never find on YouTube. Make sure that you check out all the playlists and all of the uploads on my YouTube channel. There's I think 250 some, maybe more. Keeping this in the family, I wanna mention that my daughter has just started a new video series where she's showing us in real time how she's painting her oil paintings. And she's doing it live, uh, which I think is very brave of her. <laughs> and then, She's also condensing those so there's so there'll be two versions of every painting. She's doing it live so that you can see exactly how long it takes and she's explaining things about color theory and all sorts of things that she picked up as she was building up her her art career. But she's also then condensing them down so if you don't have time for the whole one you can you can actually choose the the shorter version. So I think that's fantastic. Her name's Jessie Rashi and I'll put a link to her uh, new videos down below. She's actually the one who painted our, our cow for us. So she did a video here on this channel too, which I think was really nice of her. Thank you, Jesse. Now there's also some really fantastic things online that I found of what other people are doing. I don't have a great long list for you because you can do a lot of those searches yourself. But there's uh, one guy that I wanna make sure that you see if you're really interested in painting and drawing animals. It's His name is Aaron Blaze. His YouTube channel has just an amazing well of information about uh, how to just make phenomenal uh, realistic paintings of animals. You can get like a, a college level education just by binge watching everything on his channel. Fantastic. So don't miss it. I'll put the link down below. Now I, I don't uh, make a whole lot of finished drawings and paintings anymore. I, I used to. When I was a whole lot younger than I am now, I did sell drawings of animals um, at the Pike Place Market in Seattle. Haven't done that for years, but I know that my experience with drawing has helped a lot in my sculpting career because just being able to see the forms really makes a big difference and as you probably know I always use a pattern on the inside of the sculpture not these kind that are like three-dimensional that form all the shapes for you but when I'm making a four-legged creature I always draw the outline of that animal first put it on cardboard and use that as my uh, my armature I've got a video on how that's done and so being able to draw really makes a difference even if what you want to do eventually is be a sculptor. But if you're really interested in drawing and, and illustrating, there's a really great resource that's, they've got a free 30-day trial right now. I don't think it's special because of the virus thing. I think they do this all the time just to kind of get more customers. <laughs> but uh, S, it's called sbslearn.com and they have a, a group of illustrators and uh, visual storytellers. Uh, they do a lot of paintings for children's books. 
just amazing work and they've got a really nice collection of videos that you can watch and learn how they do it. Um, you just get a, a, a lot of information out of them and I'll put a link to that obviously down below. Now for just searching for stuff I have some ideas for that too. Uh, for us who sculpt I'm kind of already interested in getting ready for Halloween. I know it's a long time from now, but for some reason I just kind of getting in the urge. There's a whole lot of really interesting things that you can learn from other professional sculptors about Halloween masks. And if you want to get really high-end professional, the way to find them on YouTube is to use the terms, I'm going to get this right here looking at it, sculpting masks. That's, that's the key word you use. It might be different when, when you do the search, but when I use sculpting masks in the search bar, the ones that come up are all professional mask makers and set designers and people who work in the movies and uh, make just amazing monsters and creepy <laughs> Halloween mask type things. Um, really intricately detailed facial features and all that kind of stuff. Um, it's just amazing uh, what you can learn from these folks. They're, most of these folks are going to be using clay they're not finishing it out with paper mache. Uh, in fact, most of them don't even finish the whole mask in their video because that's a whole nother step. That's the technical part. They're doing the sculpting of those monsters and faces and you can just learn a lot from them. They use either oil-based clay like monster clay for instance or they use WED clay which is the the water-based clay that I use all the time. If you wanted to um, sculpt the mask and then finish it with paper mache, I do have a video that shows you how to do that but it isn't. It wasn't very detailed. I very specifically chose an African mask that was very stylized because that makes it a lot easier. I, I'm pretty sure that most of those folks make uh, molds and then cast them. I would actually love to do some plaster molds and then make latex masks. I've been wanting to do that for years. It would cost me a little bit of money to learn how to do it, so I'm not going to uh, jump into it unless a whole lot of people would be interested. But I think it would just be really fun. <laughs> Now also out on YouTube, if you use the term sculpting paper mache mask, that's where you're going to find some of my work. But you can also find some that are for younger kids. Um, not older kids like me, <laughs> but uh, younger ones. So that's a great way to search for projects that maybe your younger um, below middle school kids could do. Now speaking of kids, I do have a free coloring book that you can download off of my website and print out on your own computer. It's about endangered animals. It's got drawings that you can color and it also has information about those endangered animals. Just a little bit, enough to kind of pique someone's interest. It was made a long time ago, so all of the links that are on there to outside sources are probably broken by now, but that's no problem because I know that your kids are an awful lot better at using Google <laughs> for searching for stuff than I am. So now back to us older people, like high school or and older. Uh, if you're thinking about selling your own artwork, you know, you've been doing it for a while and you think that maybe it's time to start putting it in front of people, maybe putting it online and start to sell it. I do have a couple of people that I like watching out on YouTube because they have some really interesting videos and they're just fun to watch. Um, the first one is, uh, the, the channel is called Raffi Was Here Studios. He talks about just about everything involving uh, online art sales and I think he goes to fairs and, and sells in all kinds of different places. He's just really a lot of fun to watch. So go ahead and check those out. And the other fellow, uh, his channel is called Suarez Art. He talks a lot about um, how to design a website, how to get traffic to that website, and how to completely do away with the whole idea of putting your work in a gallery. He has a, his own gallery basically and he shows us how he puts it all together. Um, very interesting fellow, he's got a lot of really good ideas. And that's the, the end of my list. I know that this isn't comprehensive. There's a ton of stuff available for people to learn. Uh, art, sculpting, drawing. I mean the, the internet is just an amazing resource so I know that you're going to find something to do. If, you, if you're starting to get bored or a little bit antsy or maybe even a little bit crabby today <laughs> because you're kind of locked up inside and you're not used to it, then go make something. And then come visit me, ultimatepapermache.com. I'll see you there.